Transform Talks explores the impact of technology on our lives through a series of one-off interviews with the international great and the good. As Director General of the World Broadband Association, Martin Craner is in a prime position to drive a lot of the impact and certainly qualifies for membership of that great and the good club. The association describes itself as a multilateral, industry-led organisation, providing leadership for digital broadband across the next decade. And here at the Mobile World Congress in Shanghai, Martin told me about the key challenges the industry faces. The real challenge is providing appropriate levels of broadband for everyone everywhere in the world. In the developing world, in many cases, that means providing broadband for the first time and opening up opportunities for, for smart education, um, for remote working, for, for uh, smart health or healthcare for the first time, for some other opportunities in, in the developing world. In the developed world, it means better broadband. So the world has moved from being comfortable with 30 meg broadband to 100 meg broadband to one gigabit of broadband, soon to be 10 gigabits of broadband. Mm. And every time you add more broadband capability, industry finds a way of consuming it. Consumers find a way of consuming it. And so whilst I can't imagine what the vast majority of the world would need 10 g pon or 50 g pon for, I can almost guarantee, based They'll on my 35 <laughs> years in the industry, that once we provide it, it will become necessary. It won't just become a nice to have, it'll become a demand from mm. consumers. It'll be a new baseline. And what does that do to the whole issue of sustainability then, in terms of the environmental impact of infrastructure and the operations? And consumption? Well, I think when you're talking those sorts of numbers, you're talking fibre. And fibre mm. is hugely sustainable, probably the most sustainable form of, of connectivity. Um, based on all of the various studies that we've looked at, fibre is maybe 80% more efficient than copper. It's more efficient than 5G. So from an energy point of view, you're talking about more fibre. Fibre goes into the ground, it stays there longer, it's passive, it requires less truck rolls, it requires less energy to operate and, and it breaks down less often. So from a sustainability point of view, you're actually improving sustainability by moving to those higher and higher speeds. And it's not just then about fibre to the home, might be fibre to the room or fibre to the office, fibre to the machine. But of course, a huge portion of our life is the mobile life, not just the fixed life. Mm. The, the challenge is we have to improve the sustainability and the energy efficiency of, of our mobile technologies. And every generation of mobile has improved its sustainability characteristics. It uses less power uh, per, per user, per megabit, however you want to measure it. Of course, we are using, there's more users, more megabits. So, yep. you know, to some extent we, we end up, it's a difficult battle uh, because it is so popular. But so you need to continue to fight the battle on the power consumption of your mobile world and you need to move as much of the world towards fibre that you can. I was also struck recently by a, a study by GSMA Intelligence in partnership with Huawei that demonstrated that operators will improve their bottom line by 4% for each 20% reduction in their energy consumption. Um, again, do you think that that is understood, that green isn't just a sort of charitable endeavour, it's actually profitable, there's, there's a revenue raiser here for companies? Uh, it, it absolutely is not well enough understood, but I think that report that you refer to is hugely important in terms of it's the first serious piece of work that I have read that makes this point in a very clear and simple way. And I think the whole world understands the moral high ground around sustainability. But what that report goes out to show is that it also is smart business. Uh, I think it's called green is good for business. And from that point of view, that report is saying going down the sustainable road will uh, you know, gives you an opportunity to reduce costs. It gives you an opportunity to grow revenue. And it gives you also an opportunity to protect your business because consumers' behaviour is changing. Consumers 
are beginning to vote with their feet in terms of wanting to purchase products from businesses that are more sustainable. If you don't become more sustainable, you are putting yourself in a dangerous position as a company because consumers can change very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. The landscape can change very, very quickly. So to, to a certain extent in that report, they talk about it as a carrot and stick. The carrot is you can reduce your cost, you can grow revenue, there's new revenue opportunities around it. But there's also a stick, which is not just government regulations, which of course is coming down the road mm. and already is here in many cases, but there's also this fear that if you don't do this, then enterprises will start deselecting you as their supplier, that consumers will start buying from companies that have a higher sustainability set of credentials.